We are joined by Warren Berman of Great Temptations Catering, who, I don't know, did you know about that restaurant? No. No. Pretty neat, though. Interesting concept. But you know what? It ties in because we do have some seafood here and some mm. expensive seafood, may mm. I add. I mean, lobster tails, how much are they going for these days? Probably about $32 a pound. 32 bucks a pound, yeah. And far well. Not bad. You gotcha. the lobster tail. So you know what? I have to say off the top, I've had your food before because Warren actually caters to our Rogers TV staff meetings, and the food is always so, so, so good. Thank you. Now, what kind of events, you know, besides our meetings, I'm sure you do many, many events. What kind of events do you cater to typically? We do a lot of corporate events. We do a lot of grand openings. Um, we did Viridian's 10th anniversary back in November. Oh, wow. Um, we do a lot of social catering, weddings, Weddings, you do? Okay. You do it uh, all. And you're voted number one caterer by the Durham Business... Times, Times. For the second year in a row. Yeah, That's so congratulations. cool. Congratulations. Yeah, thank Best you. Best caterer in Durham. Yeah, two thank years you. in a row. Look at you. That's awesome. And I just hit you. I'm sorry. That's we okay. hardly know each other. I'm like, no way. That's awesome. <laughs> Give him All the right. you remember, well, just remember. And he's the guy with the knife, so I'm going to watch out. <laughs> exactly. All right. What are we making today? So today we're going to do a tower of roasted fennel. <clears throat> Lobster tails and seared foie gras, and we're going to do with a salsa of uh, roasted cherry tomatoes, roasted corn, and pomegranate. That sounds very nice. Very rich. A little very red for shishy. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Um, and then we're going to drizzle a 100-year-old balsamic mm -hmm. vinegar on it, which we uh, carry in my store, uh, which is located in South Ajax. We have truffle oil and uh, orange olive oil and uh, virgin olive oil. Beautiful. Well, let's get started and then we'll talk a little bit more about you and what kind of events you do and your store. I'd love to hear all about that. Cool. But first off, you're gonna chop up this fennel, aren't you? Yeah, now this fennel is also known as anise. The tops of the fennel is known as fronds, mm -hmm. which is typically used fronds. for fronds, mm -hmm. which is typically used for garnishes. So we'll just save those and put them aside here. Okay, because makes it look good. Look garnish. It always looks like, like art, nice. right? Yeah. When you're done. Okay, so and fennel, like, what's it good for? I mean, is it fennel? Fennel is a great grilled vegetable. It's very underused vegetable. It's, it is. It tastes like anise. Um, Which and is what? I mean, it's not licorice. a light taste. It tastes so it's got a very licorice taste. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very nice. light. Smell? Of course you can. <laughs> it does smell like licorice. Does it? Black licorice. Yeah. yeah. So we're just julienning very quickly, and yeah, sambuca. Well, at least the anise, the sambuca is made from anise. So. I was just about to ask that. So. We'll do there. Cool. Let's go. That was a really quick chop. Yeah. I was worried about your fingers there. So it's a. I'm sure there's been some finger uh, atrocities over yeah. the years. Yeah. Oh, especially when you're starting out in the business, you lose a few fingers and they grow. <laughs> yeah. They grow back, yeah, and then everything's good. Got some robotic Every fingers there. Every great chef has yeah. cut themselves uh, at oh, least yeah. once. Oh, yeah. Otherwise, you're not doing your job properly. <laughs> so what's that exactly? What's this is this is a, an extra virgin uh, orange olive oil. Orange olive. But it's instead of it being infused, it's actually the orange is uh, blood orange is actually pressed right into the oil, mm. which gives it. A way more intense flavor mm -hmm. than uh, ones oh, that are yeah. infused. So when they actually make the olive oil, they're taking blood oranges and pressing it in right into the oil directly. Oh, yeah, and blood oranges. Big orange fan is, of the blood orange. Yeah, and they have a, a far more intense taste. Now, is this just uh, salt and pepper? It's kosher salt, cracked pepper, mm -hmm. a little garlic, a little uh, cayenne. I uh, use something called togarashi, which is Japanese chili. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You have your whole little secret mudley in there, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to lay that out on the tray here, and we'll roast that in the oven. Okay. So is this a quick oven? Like, how hot is that right now? This is about 450 degrees. Right. These are ovens I would take on site because because when we do catering, yeah. we don't always have the luxury of having a kitchen. Yeah. So um, what we'll do is uh, bring my own. It's almost like impossible. Well, it, we have to. We have to be prepared to. Yeah. What sets us apart from a lot of other caterers is I've invested a great deal of money in equipment mm -hmm. and uh, off-premise stuff. So when we do the Rib Fest and uh, Bon Appetit, we have our own portable hand sink, which has hot and cold running water. And you've so got that edge over everybody, right? If it but is a competition like a Rib Fest, you got it down. But it's important because, you, I mean, you know, aside from the cooking end of things today, you've got to worry about the health aspects. Yep. So, yeah, you know, and we're and trying I mean, to... it's a challenge. You've got to keep things warm and fresh at once. And the timing is everything. Thing, isn't it? Oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, especially on catering. And catering, catering is like being on TV. Everything's ad libbed, and you never know what's going to happen. And yep. you yeah. go prepared for the un. Or be prepared 100%. for the unprepared. One hundred percent. That doesn't make yeah. sense. The unexpected, so, I meant. Yeah. So what else is next? Now we got lobster tails. Hey. Now I'm going to show you two ways to clean lobster tails. Okay. Um, 
Is this something you would recommend people try at home, though? Yeah, or? I mean, I mean I've only had lobster in a restaurant. If, Never attempted it myself. If mm. you're if you're not a person who likes to, there's there's a myth about lobsters screaming in the hot water, which is just the air escaping oh, from the shell. Oh, it's always made me so sad when I heard about that. <laughs> Poor yeah, little yeah. lobster. But, yes. but it's, it's it's not true. They don't they don't really squeal. Okay. So. To know. There's two ways to do it. If you're someone who's not comfortable with a knife, what yeah. you can do is take a good pair of scissors and you just run it down the front of the shell like this. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's simple enough. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to do that. And then just split them open. Yeah. Right? Now, what's your method? Is that uh, your method? Yeah. No, I'll show you mine. No, okay. I, okay so Yours is probably a little bit more elaborate. It's, well, but it's not elaborate. It's just, you know, chefs are anal people. We fast. just do our own do our own thing. Yeah. Do you guys want to try and... Uh, and you do a little chopping. Little... All right, and then you could show me your. I'll show you how easy this is. That if Kasha can do it. Oh, actually, this. Care. Okay. Careful. Careful. No, no fingers. You make it look so Kasha. easy, and I feel like I'm hurting this poor lobster. Ah. Ah, okay, you know what? Here, I'll let you finish your job. You're the, you're the expert. <laughs> okay, so now show us one scissor. very quick. Oh. Okay, so then you just go like this. You just score it. Just Bang. score it. Bang. Okay. But you guys make it look so easy, right? When you chop to. <laughs> I could never do that. Well, you've been handling a knife for 30 years. No. You kind of learn. And you have to. I mean, you don't. Restaurants. People don't understand the pressure in a restaurant. No, uh, I can, it can, I can be imagine. It's a very stressful job. You know what? Job. A lot of TV shows, reality shows, are now opening our eyes to that kind of thing. You know what? You're just putting this, these into, into your little trust the oven here we are going to a commercial break greattemptationscatering.com but you got to come back because we're going to see how warren plates this delectable dish that we're making which is specifically what are we making all together tower of fennel seared lobster seared foie gras with a oh. pomegranate and roasted corn salsa it's a tough life i don't know how we're going to try that after the break more Can't of wait. warren when we come back from great temptations catering stick with us all right okay Welcome back to daytime. Well, we're working here with Warren Berman of uh, Great Temptations Catering, which is named two years in a row the best caterer of Durham. Whoa, that's awesome. Good for you. Thank you. And uh, bring us up to speed. What have we done so far and okay. what are we about to do? So we got the fennel in the oven. We have the lobster tails roasting, and I'm going to show you very quickly how to do a foie gras. This is lobe foie gras, which is a goose liver. In Canada, we don't get actual goose livers. So we get duck livers. So this is a duck liver. I hear a lot about foie gras, foie gras. Like there is a big The caterers, the chefs, they love it. I'm it's, sorry, how do you pronounce that again? Foie gras. Foie gras. Yeah, so it's like foie. fake fat? Is that what it means? It's not fake fat. It's it pure fat. Oh, yeah. good fat. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, you, it's very hard to buy this in a store, but if you have a, you know, someone who's a chef, you know, you want to make sure you get all these little veins out. So we'll do that very quickly. And you're quickly. hooked up, right? I mean, you yeah. guys have your connections, so somebody so, at home couldn't necessarily find this. They could at my store. I've been selling it. Your store. Yes. Hey, there we go. Let's talk about your store right now. Where exactly are you located? We're at 105 Bailey Street West, mm -hmm. uh, which is one block west of Harwood on the south side of Bailey in the No Frills Plaza. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have uh, 700 stories. It's more of like a boutique. And I set the store up to be sort of twofold. One half of it's prepared foods, where people who are too busy and don't want to cook come in, get meals to go, pick but and choose. But they want the delectable tastes and, and the, other the half, rich foods. The other half is for people who are foodies. Yeah. And I've been to Durham for 23 years, and there's been no place to go and get uh, gourmet items like this. So I, nice. figured I wanted to design the store so that people didn't have to go downtown Toronto. No, knock on Toronto. Yeah. It makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But, but, Keep you know, it here in Durham, right? So I've got truffles. I've got vanilla. I've got saffron. I've got high-end chocolate. Oh, oh. I've got 10 different oils. We've got the 100-year-old balsamic, 25-year-old balsamic, 50-year-old balsamic vinegars. So it's really, <laughs> there's nothing we don't have. If you're looking for something, come yeah. down. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get this pan nice and hot. Okay. We're going to sear the foie gras. Yep. I'm going to pull this up here. Are you just newly opened the store? Or? Yeah, we opened up uh, in November of 2009. Uh, okay. And uh, the reason, it was an extension of the catering business. Yeah, because I'm just going to say, like, aren't you busy enough? <laughs> um, Wait a No, when you're in your own know. business, yeah, you're never busy enough. Knows me, yeah, wow. you never, you're never busy enough. Um, yeah. Okay, and this is almost ready. Yeah. So uh, you see the juices. It smells amazing. It's a neat little okay, oven, though. Okay, so that, yeah. well, this this saves my uh, backside more than once. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. we're going to do here is we're going to mix together some yeah. roasted corn. And what I, I did with the corn mm -hmm. is I just rubbed it with olive oil and salt and pepper mm -hmm. and uh, took cherry tomatoes mm -hmm. whole 
extra virgin olive oil, garlic, salt and pepper. Oh gosh. And we got a little so pomegranate here. You're making yeah. it so hungry, And it's Warren. all real ingredients. It's all fresh. Yeah, I don't use any yeah. bases. Everything I don't use any scratch. chemicals. Yeah. Uh, my my fellow chef friends hate me because I tell them I make too much work for them, but yeah. that's I'm a purist. Yeah, but you you taste the difference, right? You know when you're having it, and that's why the people probably keep coming back to you. You know. Well, that's that's what I like to think. Yeah. I mean, people know that, and we will never repeat a menu. I've got clients of three years that we do regular lunches for that mm -hmm. we can change the menu all the time, time. Nice. and we do it all different cuisines okay Good. so this one key thing about cooking foie gras is it cooks very fast yeah it'll melt basically gives us a 100 fat and it'll <laughs> melt very very quickly we're so just gonna eat fat yeah. there right pretty much so how does that work so is this gonna be uh you know on the bed of something or yeah, is this we're gonna, gonna put this on top of the lobster tails and we'll put the fennel on the bottom oh. so we're just gonna give this a little quick saute sure um oh that smells good eh this is the most awesome it's like hard to I don't think I've ever had that. Right? I have no? never had this. Yeah, you, you, Neither have I. Five years of being, you know, wined and dined on this <laughs> show, and I've been so lucky and loving every day of it, but I've never had this type of foie gras. Well, you're going to get a chance to do it. Now, that's doing. We won't get this stuff out of the oven. Oh, those lobster tails coming along, Warren. Those lobster oh. tails are looking good. Okay. So here's our orange roasted fennel, mm -hmm. which we will put on the bottom of this plate here. Now, how does it work if somebody's interested? They've got, you know, a corporate event coming up. Let's say a wedding. Um, is there a, a, a cap size of event you can do, or I've done you know, from two to two thousand, two to two hundred, whatever? I, the largest event I ever worked on was twenty thousand people on the island. Did uh, you just say twenty thousand yes. people? Yes, we did a we did a run, a marathon run on uh, the island. Oh, I was running the island for a few years as a chef, corporate chef there. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, try to make coffee for twelve. 12 You're 10, unbelievable. People. No, I'm mentally, You're incredible. I'm mentally ill. One minute right, left. Let's <laughs> get this plated up. Yeah. How are we doing here on time? Okay. Okay. So. Show us how this work of art comes together. We are going to. As Warren plates this, I just can't wait to see how this comes together. GreatTemptationsCatering.com. That's the website. We also have your phone number up on the screen if anybody's interested. If you have an event or if they want to check out your gallery, you have. You have a beautiful gallery showing the different foods that you. Uh, I do all my own together. photography. We. I do your own photography too. I do my own oh, photography. It's your hobby. <laughs> it is. There and you, you know go. what? Yeah. I do it. It's, it's food photography. I think it's a uh, pictures speak a thousand words. They do. They do. It makes such a difference. Oh, that looks so so good. So we're gonna put a little of the fat on top, of course. Hey. Oh, that looks so good. Fifteen seconds good. left. Can okay. you put it together? Oh. Yeah. oh. You got that. And the final piece de resistance is the hundred-year-old. Oh, bravo. Hundred-year-old balsamic vinegar. Hundred year old. Hundred this, year old. Balsamic. How much is this worth? This is worth. Well, I sell the it for salt, fifty salt. fifty dollars. Whoa! And there you go. Beautiful, Warren. Great temptations catering. I can't wait to try this. We're going to try that at the end of the show. You're the best. All right, we're going to a break. When we come back, hypnotizing ourselves with Dave Kern, the bad boy of hypnotism. Uh oh, uh oh. All right, that's after the break. Stick with us. Welcome back. Is this Take a look beautiful? at that. Beautiful. So in here we have fennel, we have lobster tail, foie gras with a beautiful, you like that word, foie, don't you? Yeah, foie, with foie a really gras. nice salsa with roasted uh, cherry tomatoes or their grape tomatoes. Yeah, using the pomegranate was interesting pomegranate. for this salsa. Yeah. Because it's nature's candy, and as you were talking about before, mm -hmm. a great antioxidant. A great antioxidant. Let's dig in. Okay, should we give this a try? I'm going to try to make so. an everything bite so that I can put it all. And again, this is from our friends from Great Temptations Catering, which uh, serve the Durham region and I'm sure the city and the surrounding area. And they have a store now in Ajax. Hey, yeah, so cheers to out. that. <laughs> I know. Mm. Mmm, it is nice. Now, usually you're a crew member with us, mm -hmm. and I always and you just, run on you set look right over. after. He's got no, no shame. Christian and I will be <laughs> eating something, and it's always so good. He just basically takes my fork out of my hand yeah. and says, "I'm trying this, Baderka." I'm like, I hate it when, I hate it when Brett's on crew. He just takes my fork and eats my food. That's not true. Mm. You offer you offer me your fork, and I I just. I, I, I'll, I'll take your germs. I just, He's I... He's lying. He's totally lying. He totally just takes them from me. But it's okay. You know what? I can share. I love to share. You're a good Especially little 